Congress is urgently in pressure. Passenger Mr. Jeffrey Sampson. The flight is in the final stages of boarding and is ready for departure. Good morning. Thanks for joining me today on this uh, early flight from Brisbane to Melbourne on board Qantas's brand new Boeing 787. Looking forward to showing you around the lounge and on the aircraft. Uh, so sit back, relax and enjoy this flight. Nice to meet you. On this flight, I was flying business class, which gave me access to Qantas's premium lounge entry. After a quick security check, it was up the escalators and into the Qantas lounge precinct, where I entered the brand new Qantas Brisbane domestic business class lounge. As you can see, there is a separate bar area with lots of communal and uh, individual spaces for you to enjoy prior to departure. There's also brand new shower suites, and as you can see, the shape elongates in a long, narrow corridor before spreading out uh, towards the terminal apron where you can see a beautiful view of uh, the Qantas Link aircraft as you're enjoying your uh, pre-departure snack. I love the fresh juice bar at the Qantas Business Class lounges and I opted for a carrot, celery and watermelon juice on this occasion which was very much delicious. So I found a quieter spot to introduce myself uh, this morning in the lounge. My name is Tom Mackay. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Queensland and I love all things aviation. I've had a passion for flying ever since I can remember. Uh, it was always something that excited me to see a plane taking off and somehow managing to stay up in the sky. And uh, ever since my first flight, I've just wanted a little bit more every single time worked my way up to collecting a lot of points across various airline programs through credit cards, shopping, insurances uh, and all the other possible ways of earning points to be able to save up and acquire um, premium cabins uh, on my flights. So today on my flight to Melbourne I'll be trying out the new business class on the Boeing 787. Before I knew it the departure call had been made and I set off towards the gate it's just a short walk from the Qantas lounge precinct in the domestic terminal and today I was departing from gate 24. Most passengers were seemingly unaware that they were on a particularly special aircraft for this domestic flight to Melbourne, but I certainly knew what I was going on to and so did the crew. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, I'm very excited nice to be flying on the Dreamliner. Thank you lovely. very much. Went down the other and then I was down the jet bridge before turning left into the forward business class cabin. Good morning. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for that. Good morning. The overhead bins are large uh, and able to accommodate most modern uh, pieces of luggage, including my small suitcase today. Qantas has installed the second generation of the business studio seat on its 787 Dreamliners, and it's quite a nice seat indeed. First impression coming on board. Wow. Still got that brand new smell and uh, extremely spacious, very comfortable. Um, lovely crew walking on board this morning. So, looking forward to a great flight. A pre departure drink of champagne, orange juice, or water was offered, and then it was time to have a little bit of an explore of the seat itself. Plenty of leg room on first glance and a nice big bright touchscreen display. There's also a convenient coat hook, however the crew does offer to store your coat in the forward closet. A nice touch. There is a partial recline preset, however it was disabled on this flight for takeoff and landing, 
Apparently not approved on the Dreamliner for a domestic operation at this stage. I was thrilled to be flying in business class on the Dreamliner. For a short taxi from the domestic terminal to runway 19, we were approved for a straight out departure towards the south and began our two hour journey down to Melbourne. Operators of the 787 with Rolls-Royce's Trent 1000 engines have received quite a bit of trouble recently, but no such issues for Qantas with these beautiful General Electric GE NX engines pairing up. I enjoyed the views of the Brisbane River and the Port of Brisbane industrial area as we swung around to the south side suburbs and uh, continued on our path down to Melbourne. This is my first trip report video but I'm really excited to increase my flying over the next months and look forward to releasing even more videos uh, in the future. So if you like this one, please consider subscribing. The Dreamliner's windows tend to divide the aviation community. As for the electrochromatic dimmable passenger windows that do not require physical window shades, I am not a fan. I do prefer the physical shade, but they are quirky and cool nonetheless, and of course I was happy to try them. Moving towards a more detailed examination of the seat, of course you can see that there's a number of preset functions available on the seat control panel with uh, massage, uh, and pre-defined seating positions. There's also quite a nice level of granular control for the, the backrest as well as controlling the area of lumbar support and the footrest. You can also control the ambient lighting around the seat itself uh, in the storage areas and of course there's the do not disturb sign which uh, lights up nicely when you press it. There's a nice little storage area for your headphones in my case as well as your passport or other documents which you might be travelling with. The supplied headphones, of course I travel with my own Bose QC35s, as well as an AC PowerPoint, USB port and the headphone jack. It also still has the handheld remote, uh, just in case you are too far away from the touch screen, as well as a nice handy mirror, vanity mirror to uh, touch up during those long haul flights. There's a nice reading light over your shoulder and the literature pocket is uh, towards the exit of the seat itself. There is a little uh, a coat hook as well. Of course the screen, um, plenty of leg room with a sloped footrest um, as well as the foot cubby itself which forms part of the bed. The seat width is quite nice as you can see um, and the seat belt is the lap band as well as the sash as well. Having a look at the seat, you go into its fully flat mode, you can see uh, it happens reasonably quickly here, extending well over 1.9 metres in length and uh, being 193 centimetres myself, I was quite comfortable um, being able to stretch my legs out uh, with a pillow, uh, including having my boots still on. The foot cubby itself could be a little bit larger for big uh, people such as myself and with particularly large feet. However, um, for most flights and for most passengers, it probably won't be an issue. Of course, you can also remove your shoes as well to make things a little bit easier. However, this was a morning flight and I wasn't necessarily looking to sleep on this flight. As you can see, I'm pretty happy with the result. After settling in, it was time for some breakfast and I opted for the Bertram usually served with uh, fresh bread and yoghurt. 
which was quite delicious and uh, complemented my fruit salad that I had in the lounge earlier. The table is not set on this flight, but that didn't matter, as I tucked into the Birch and Muesli and enjoyed some of the Qantas entertainment. Speaking of the entertainment, it's delivered on a beautiful and bright touch screen in front of the seat with plenty of options to choose from, including on this domestic flight. It was easy to swipe through the latest premiere movies, all in beautiful high definition colour and quality. One thing that was lacking though was the lack of audio. There was no CDs or albums installed uh, and just a few short podcasts. The radio didn't appeal to me either. There is a weather app installed with information about the destination location's weather uh, as well as other Australian and world cities as well. There's also an introductory video to tell you about the seats features on board the Dreamliner. I love checking out the moving map feature on different aircrafts and I have to say that Qantas's Dreamliner version is excellent. It had lots of different uh, viewpoints including uh, changing the window view from cockpit to side um, as well as being able to preview the route, uh, the mid-flight portion of your journey as well as uh, an overhead view. Overall, a very swish product, with noticeable improvements over the first generation business studio seat installed on the A330 fleet of Qantas. The business cabin has two toilets, which aren't anything special. They're quite small like any other airline toilet, however they do feature amenities from a spa. I was actually invited to go and have a look at the entire aircraft, and the crew members at the back even allowed me to have a look at the rear crew rest area. The cabin crew have designated breaks on those very ultra-long haul segments from Perth to London and vice versa, and this is where they get to rest and recuperate. After checking out the rear galleys and crew rest area, I took a stroll through the relatively empty economy cabin and down through to the premium economy cabin before being welcomed very kindly back to the forward business class cabin. <laughs> The cabin service manager even showed me to the forward crew rest area where the pilots actually take a break during their long haul segments from Perth to London and on the return segments as well. Before I knew it, we were approaching Melbourne Airport and overall I was ecstatic at my flight experience. All of the members of the crew were so proud and so excited of their brand new aircraft and we're really, really interested to show it off to all customers on board the aircraft. Overall, this was a really enjoyable flight. The crew went above and beyond, even on this short domestic two hour segment on what is normally an ultra long haul aircraft. They were polite and attentive, but not intrusive, and were willing to go above and beyond to answer any requests or questions that I had about the aircraft and about the staffing and other interesting quirks related to this new era of air travel in the Qantas fleet. Unfortunately, redeeming award flights on Qantas's long haul routes is very competitive and extremely difficult to secure, which means that I probably won't get the opportunity to fly this aircraft again in business class on a long haul route, but it was a great experience nonetheless. Perhaps there'll be a time in the future where I can book outright business class fares. We can only dream, right? Anyway, thanks for watching to the end. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and I look forward to bringing you my next instalment.